I used to work for Belden, 26 years with Belden, they manufacture wire and cable. That's how I arrived and now they own Grass Valley and Miranda and hundreds of other companies and, uh, and now I'm retired, you see, so I can wander around the world uh, when I feel like it instead of going every week. Now suddenly my, I'm home when my wife is like, I show up in her kitchen now, which she's not used to. But so, have you seen me give a presentation? How many people here have seen me? One, see, only one, okay. This is good. Okay, two, three, four, okay. And the thing is, normally I give technical presentations talking uh, with charts and graphs and slides and, and the technical talk about uh, the world's most boring subject, wire and cable, um, and which is why people were amazed I could make something interesting that is, has absolutely no interest at all. And this is how I built a career out of this. And this is a subtle hint to you is to pick something that nobody else wants to do and do it better than anybody else does and you're set for life, really. And I'm, this is not a joke, you know? But I'm not gonna talk about technical stuff today, even though I could. I could switch in midstream to another presentation. Uh, I've done that many times. Uh, but today I'm gonna talk about you mostly. I'm gonna talk about me just because I'm the only me I've ever known, you know? I don't know you. And I'll tell you about how I got where I got to and how I got to be successful and you could do this as well. But then I'm gonna actually talk about you and what you might do and what you might think about. Okay, so, the road not taken. Now see, the thing is, you know stuff. Now you think that the stuff that you already know is worth nothing, you do. Believe me, I know you think so. Ah, who said Robert Frost? Now see, he just, he made money without even knowing he had made money, okay? Because what is, what is this thing I wrote not taken? It's a poem and I'm gonna read you a poem. You didn't think you'd get poetry in this class tonight, right? When, what, what the hell is a poem? Two roads diverged in the yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Well, no. And then took the other, just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. But was for that passing there, he had worn really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, for another day. Yet knowing how the way leads on to way, I doubt it if I should ever come back. You see, you're gonna have all these paths thrown at you. Which path do you take? <laughs> take the path less taken. Okay. Uh, I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, like me right now, age 68. Two roads diverged in the woods and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Okay, that's what poetry does, I guess, is it gives you a lesson. Take the one less traveled. And what does that mean? Well, it means number one, that the stuff you already know is immensely valuable to you. You just don't know how. Now, I did a lot of things on the way here, and I don't mean today, I mean in my lifetime. I had some pretty weird jobs along the way. I'm gonna talk about some of them. Not a single one of them is one that I haven't used in my career with Belden selling wire and cable. Not a single one have I not used. And you're gonna do the same thing. Okay, there's the dollar there which he already got. Yeah. He didn't know his knowledge would be valuable. That's right, he didn't know that his knowledge was valuable, but there it goes. Okay, here's my road. I met this guy in church. I was the sound guy in the church. I was already interested. Oh, this guy named Dick Garrison, probably don't know him. He's dead now. I tried to get an intern position at KYA, my favorite radio station. They said they didn't take interns. I should have kept on going with that. You know, that's one of the things I think about is 
Once I went to one place looking as an intern, and they said no, why didn't I just keep on going? Keep on going. Don't stop. Don't give up. People who fail have given up. Don't give up. Keep going. I, with this same guy, I built a recording studio. The highlight was recording uh, Jimmy Doohan for the animated Star Trek. That was, oh, I was a big Trekkie, Trekker. <laughs> Still am. Still am. OK, you have no idea. <laughs> I went to college, UC Santa Barbara, but college and I did not do very well. I'm one of those people who didn't graduate from college, and it didn't seem to affect me at all. Because I came out of it, and I went and got my FCC license, now called an FCC Lifetime General. It's now completely useless, but that's OK, because at the time, it was one of those requirements that people put on the list, must have an FCC license. And in the meanwhile, I sold t-shirts, Star Trek bumper stickers, posters, all sorts of weird things. I traveled around the US doing this, and you'd think it has nothing to do with it. But I learned all about selling. Selling, yeah. You know what? You're selling yourself. That's what you're selling. So sell yourself. And I ended up in this place, Honest Bob's Used Stereo, which doesn't exist anymore in Berkeley. And this guy walked in, who I don't think is here tonight. I thought he was going to be here tonight, but he's not. This guy walked in and bought some headphones and some speakers. And next day he walked in, and next week he walked in and bought a receiver or a tuner or stuff. And I thought this guy had a 50-room house. Who the hell are you, and why are you buying all this stuff? You know who was? Well, he was this guy, Art Leberman, who was chief engineer of KRE and KBLX in Berkeley. And I said, I have an FCC first phone. And, and he looked at me like I was nuts. What are you doing at Honest Bob's used stereo if you have a first phone? Uh, making money. You know? like, and within a week, I was chief engineer at KTIM in San Rafael. Suddenly, I was into the radio, the very place I wanted to be that I should have done the intern bit and forgot about. I could have saved myself all this time if I just kept going. And I worked for KYA, KLHT, KJAZZ, five and a half years at KJAZZ in Alameda. And then there was a vagabond installer for all these people, including Sutro Tower in San Francisco. And I thought, wow, I guess I'm going to be this thing, a broadcast engineer for the rest of my life. I loved it. I loved these jobs. I couldn't imagine a better job. But then I stood up at a lunch. You can come to these lunches too, a Babe's Lunch, Bay Area Broadcast Engineers Society. It's not a real society. But that is lunch. Last Wednesday of every, week, every month, they have a lunch, and you can come. And this guy was there looking for somebody to run the broadcast portion of his business, which doesn't exist anymore. Zach doesn't exist up here. I've been a customer of Zach Electronics since 1964. Where were you in 1964? <laughs> OK. I had an account with Zach in 1964. Now, I was 14 years old, you understand. Why would they give an account to a 14-year-old? I don't know. I didn't <laughs> ask. But I used it. And I guess I paid the bill because they kept it going. I ended up buying some rather large tape machines, which are a few thousand dollars. I should have bought a car instead, but no, no. I bought tape machines. I went the direction I wanted to, get, to go. And then, working at Zach Electronics, I noticed that our Belden rep had left town and gone to Austin, Texas. So I applied for that job. And 26 years later, I was still with Belden, wandering around the world, schmoozing with engineers, talking about wire and cable, the world's most boring subject. And nobody else was doing this. In fact, I'll tell you this right now. Since I left Belden a year and a half ago, nobody is still doing this. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. If you want to do something like this, I never had a real job. I just did fun stuff. I wandered around the world and got paid for it. I remember being on a ferry boat 
up in uh, uh, Washington, just outside of uh, Victoria, British Columbia, watching an eagle fishing and thinking, I'm getting paid for this. <laughs> wow. And it only got better from there. So my worst job I ever had on the way there, delivering phone books, and that's because I didn't know how to deliver phone books. And you'd think anybody could deliver. No, no, no. The people who made money doing that knew exactly how to do it. And once I had done it, I understood what they knew that I didn't know, so I never did it again. Okay, But they made money doing this. Now, you can't deliver phone books today because guess what? There aren't any phone books. Okay, so you're not going to do that. But you get the idea that you can learn how to do stuff that looks so obvious, but the people who know how actually make money doing it. No job that didn't give me the knowledge and the skills I later used. Okay, I've already said that. So what do you do? Build a skill set. If you know what you want to do, even generally what direction you want to go in, then you have a rough idea of the kind of things you need to learn. Okay, take a good hard look at technology. Which path do you take? And the point is, take the path least taken. Take the path people aren't going. So many paths are untaken. In fact, these are some paths that I was offered along the way. And I think to this very day, some of the paths that I could have done. I worked in the film industry for a short while, doing sound on film, sound stuff, and editing, so film editing, back when it was film. And I could have done that. I could have taken that path, but I didn't. Not sure why. I had a friend who was making power amps. And he made me a bunch of power amps, which I used on sound jobs. And I, we could have made power amps. And I look, and that was a time when suddenly there was a huge plethora. This is when the Crown DC 300 first came out. Is that an ancient thing that you might know about? No. That was one of the most, and, or the phase linear 700, some of the most powerful amplifiers of the 1970s. OK. I was there. I could have been part of that, but I didn't. Why? Well, I don't have a reason why. I didn't notice. Maybe what I needed was somebody to say, go take a look. Check it out. Maybe that's something you want to do. You know, Yogi Berra says, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. OK? That's pretty simple. You could do that. Of course, you understand the whole point is you don't know which way to go. That's up to you. There is no correct path. So be prepared to jump. And I'll show you in a second what this means, what jumping means. And along the way, I asked 30 people at this Bay Area Broadcast Engineers Society. It's not what you think it is, OK. Bay Area Broadcast Engineers Society. Lunch, is a lunch. I asked 30 people, what will be gone in 50 years? I gave a presentation, and part of it was they wrote these things down for me. OK. This is the list of people <laughs> voted on what will be gone in 50 years. 50 years. OK. No surprise there. Clearly, gasoline-powered vehicles are going. I just bought the last gasoline-powered vehicle I will ever buy, uh, Honda Accord, because I love Honda Accords. And, and I no longer had a company car. See, that's why I had to. But my next one's going to be electric and from then on. But I say, where's the steam-powered car? There's a technology that was, you read about steam-powered cars in the early 1890s and early 1900s. They beat everything going, everything. They were the best technology out there. Where are they now? Why aren't we making steam cars? That's the kind of road not taken. Hardwired telephones and lines. Well, of course those are going away. A lot of people don't have anything but a cell phone now. In fact, the other day, uh, we had a problem in our house with our alarm system. Well, the alarm company says it has to be hardwired to them 
so that they get the alarm code. It turned out that that line was VOIP. Aha! I didn't even know it. They had moved me and not even told me. Interesting, huh? You're going to be dragged into the future whether you like it or not. Radio and television, of course they're going away. But there are 7 billion people who are going to be employed uh, or be entertained or, or informed. They're going to get their stuff somehow, some way. It might not be radio or television, certainly not the way you know it. What's it going to be? Are you going to be part of that? You want to be part of that? That's definitely a road not taken. That's so many roads I don't even know which way they're going. Good luck. Slides. OK, now when it says me up here, I'm not talking about me. I'm saying that the 30 people, some of the people, one of whom I think is here in this room, said no, said the things that will be gone in 50 years will be me. I will be gone in 50 years. OK? And the thing is, that might be true, but, but there was a cover of a magazine not too long ago that said, there's a child alive today who will live to be 150. And we just don't know who he is, or she is, or where this person is. But they're out there somewhere. Now, is that an opportunity for you? Maybe. Well, certainly don't say, I'm going to retire, I'll be dead, I'll be gone. No, I don't think so. That's probably not one of your options. Unless you decide to kill yourself. That's a different story. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> ISDN, can you even order it? If you don't even know what this stuff is, good, because guess what? You'll never see it. OK? <laughs> Cash coins, dollar bills, lots of people voted on these. I'm a coin collector. I specialize in pennies. And I'm very excited because we are just about at the end of the world of pennies. Do you realize there are no pennies in Canada? Did you know that? No pennies in Canada. So we're right there. It costs more than a penny to make a penny. Yes, exactly. So why are we making it? <coughs> Stupidity, that's why. So my coin collection is going to come to an end. And when things come to an end, you know what happens when the artist dies? All his pictures are worth twice as much. <laughs> That's what's going to happen to me. I can't wait. <laughs> books, of course books are going. Of course, a lot of them are just electronic books now. What does this mean? Literacy? I don't think it means a whole lot. People are still going to read. Until you have direct brain transfer into the computer, in and out, Oh, now there's an interesting thing. We talk about AI as being some thing out there, when maybe it's about you. Maybe you're going to be AI'd. Brick and mortar stores. I was talking to somebody earlier right here saying, can we put everything online? Everything online? Is there something that can't be put online? You know, at first I said, well, maybe phishing can't. And he said, oh, no, no, no. You put on your, your, your 3D goggles, and you're in the boat, and you have this thing that feels like a rod, and you throw the thing in, and you catch the fish, and the other person takes it off and fillets it and mails it to you. <laughs> you know? But you could fish online, sure. So think about that. What can't you do online? And I'm not saying do that. I'm saying maybe that will give you the path less taken. Home movies and DVDs, clearly. Realtors? I hope so. <laughs> Maybe. This was interesting. Ironing clothes? I guess so. There's a lot of technology there, isn't there? You can do that for a living. Lead acid batteries, of course, batteries of all kinds. There's new battery technology. It's crazy right now. If you were a battery specialist, you wouldn't, you'd be able to pick what you wanted to do. Superconductive batteries. Oh, yeah, don't get me started. Superconductivity is great. Printed circuit boards, I guess they're going away because it's all giant ICs, you know. Libraries, certainly of the brick and mortar type, fine. Suspenders, back. Suspenders, toothpaste, really? Do we have an electronic mouth cleaner? Well, why not? <laughs> what are you doing in your spare time? 
padded bras. I didn't write this. I didn't write this, okay? So if this is incorrect, you know, if, this, if, I, brought, if I crossed some line, I'm sorry, but this was number 10 on the list. And the whole point is, this is just the first 10. I'm going to have a bigger list coming up. If you actually know what is going to happen in the next 50 years, you know what's next. You know the next big thing. What you need to do is see your stockbroker. That's how you get rich. You know, this is Warren Buffett. He's not some magic guy. He just is very good at picking companies that were undervalued. In fact, somebody asked him how he made his billions. You know what he said? Compound interest. That's how he became rich. LPCDs. Amalgam fillings. We have something in place of that? I didn't know. Tubes, finally. Paper, newspapers, neckties. Nope. Thumb drives. Really? Well, maybe. The current shoreline will be gone. <laughs> yeah. OK, that's, uh, that's interesting. Wiring cable, uh, interesting. Uh, certainly the way we know them. There's all sorts of technologies that are just chomping at the bit to take over from these, and you don't know about them at all. I could list them for you, but that would take another hour, and you could go work in those industries. Coal mines, coal-fired power plants, of course. We know that. Thumb drives. Oh, didn't we? Uh, I have it twice here. You two thumbs, Barry. Two thumbs. Thumb? Yeah. OK. Doctors, maybe no human doctors, just robots, you know. I'm sorry, I killed you. <laughs> Owner-driven cars, of course. Next, two-stroke engines. What's wrong with regular engines? I don't know. Desktop workstation, liposuction, film photographs, LEDs, incandescent lamps, clean water. Clean water's going away? Well, OK. Back. Cash pay phones, cable TV, social security. Really? That's interesting. Steve Lampin presenting at Babes. Yeah, OK, that, in 50 years, I'll be 118 years old. So I might be there. I could be there. I wouldn't still, even now, I wouldn't be the oldest person who ever lived to do that. Next. Now, controversial. Facebook will be gone. Yes. <laughs> Some people think that way. <laughs> Mac, elephants, cancer, I hope. The moon? What, what are we going to do with the moon? I don't know. Split pea soup. I hope not. I love split pea soup. Google, MS Windows, socialism. That's interesting. Apple, Microsoft, EAS. Do you even know what that is? OK, if you're a broadcaster, you know what that is. Excessive testing. Uh, that's interesting. You have to think about that one for a while. You could make money there. <laughs> NFL football. Oh, really? Some people will die. <laughs> Republican Party, maybe. Uh -oh. Compass, dynamic loudspeakers, Trump, yeah. Hey, back. <laughs> Democracy, participatory governance. The Simpsons, oh no, I think they're going forever. Forever. GMO foods, don't get me started. Non-metric systems, telephone numbers typing. Most jobs we have now, now that's a for sure. Most jobs we have now are gone. So don't pick one of those. Or if you do, you better be really good. I mean, think about this. There are people out there making saddles today. Have you bought a saddle recently? You know how much a good saddle costs? $40,000 for a nice saddle. They're making a ton of money, and they do one a month, and they make a ton of money. There's one blacksmith in San Francisco, one, Irwin Clockars. He's right on the way to the Bay Bridge. You go right by him. One guy who could make you a horseshoe <laughs> or stuff like it. Amazing. But see? That's yesterday's technology. In 1860, the mayor of New York got together a panel and said, what's New York going to look like in 100 years in the year 1960? And the panel got together, and at the end, they decided, and they wrote a very long report about this, that New York would be a ghost town, and nobody would be living there. Why? Oh, they had all the facts. 
Fact number one, the population is increasing. They could see it was getting higher and higher and higher. And by 1960, there will be 10 million people living in New York City. Well, not quite, but they were correct about the fact that it was going to be high. And they said because there were 10 million people, there would also be 10 million horses. And there'd be so much horse shit that nobody could live there. That's why. And they were absolutely correct. And you see, you understand why you're laughing? Because they didn't see the technology which was coming. Of course, they couldn't have seen in 1860 anything that was going to come after them because it was new stuff. It was the path not taken. OK. And so one of the things is when people tell you not to do stuff, take that with a grain of salt. I'd say maybe even just ignore what they say. Go only with the people who say this thing will happen because they're probably right. Even though it sounds crazy, they're probably right. Like this guy who's the head of the patent office said everything that can be invented has been invented. And that was in 1899. He missed radio, he missed TV, he missed iPhones. iPhones. He missed, you know, I mean, just think of all the stuff. He missed plastics. I mean, on and on and on and on. He missed. So he was wrong. He, by the way, he quit the patent office because of this. He said it was done. There's nothing to do. And this guy, Spencer Silver, said, if I had thought about it, I wouldn't have done the experiment. The literature is full of examples that said, you can't do this. And what did he do? He invented this weird kind of adhesive for post-it notes. That was a huge breakthrough. You didn't know that. Just, you know, it's like, what's the big deal? Because he knew about glue, right? Hey, a path not taken. You could do this too. The telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. The device is inherently of no value to us. Western Union, the telegraph company, they were offered the telephone for $100,000. The entire thing, Alexander Graham Bell. 100 grand, it's yours? Not interested. Why? Not invented here, right? They're telegraph people. Of course, they were wrong. You know, when was the last telegram? 2006. The last telegram. Heavier than air flying machines are impossible. By somebody who should have known better, Lord Kelvin. That's the guy who, he did some amazing things, including they named, uh, you know, um, absolute zero temperatures after him. Zero degrees Kelvin, named after him. The wireless music box, that is to say a radio. The radio has no imaginable commercial value. Who would pay for a message sent to nobody in particular? And this is somebody talking to David Sarnoff, who was trying to sell the idea of radio in 1920, when radio was just starting up. And this guy said, nobody's going to buy that. A message sent to nobody in particular. Wrong. There's no likelihood man can ever tap the power of the atom. And this guy won the Nobel Prize in physics. Until, of course, we had a couple of bombs in World War II, and now everybody has them, and we're all arguing about them, and so on and so on. This is uh, the guy who ran the Manhattan Project, said, the bomb will never go off. I speak as an expert in explosives. But of course, he didn't know what the hell he was talking about, because this is new technology. Next. Man will never meet, reach the moon regardless of all future scientific advances. This guy was the father of radio, invented the audion, the first tube to amplify. Don't talk about stuff that you don't understand. Go search it out. Go learn stuff. You know, Get that skill set going. Then start talking. This guy started IBM. Thomas Watson Sr. Watson Sr. I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. Five, maybe, because they took a whole room, you know? Maybe five. His son took over the month after this and turned it into what we know IBM is today, sort of. 
And the point is, he was wrong, of course. Computers in the future may weigh no more than one and a half tons. By the way, this magazine is sitting on my desk at home. Somebody went and found it and sent it to me. The day we have digital TVs is the same day we'll have an anti-gravity machine. The father of high definition television. Now, see, I was reading a story the other day on anti-gravity. I couldn't put it down. If you're interested in these kinds of quotes, go get a copy of this book, The Experts Speak. It's a great book. It's sitting on my nightstand. If I get depressed about something, I open this book up, and after about five minutes, I'm ready to go. Because, you know, nobody has a clue, and the people who are th really have all the money or all the brains or all the anything, they are so wrong. They are so wrong. Don't listen to them. Do what your heart tells you to do. Next slide. So how do you know what to do? Well, get a mentor. Get somebody to help you. I tried to mentor people all the way through broadcasting and all the way through my career. And the whole point is, we've talked about SMPTE. I've mentioned the Society of Broadcast Engineers, the Audio Engineering Society, IEEE. Electrical Engineers, National Association of Broadcasters. You can't join this one. Stations can, but you can go to their conventions. We talked about that. Uh, computer stuff, data stuff. And there are hundreds, maybe thousands of organizations. So what this guy and I have been doing is trying to figure out how to show you what's out there to choose. Something I would have died for 50 years ago. Somewhere I could go and say, that sounds interesting. That sounds, ooh, look at this. Now, oh, I didn't think about that. That's really interesting. And I would go. And you could too. And just so you know, I have a list of 120 magazines in these fields, audio, video, data, broadcasting, film, that kind of stuff. 120 magazines. And I would be glad to send you the list. You just have to email me. Next slide. And oh, here's this website that we're trying to put together, mediaforward.net, which will list everything, every meeting everywhere. I don't know how far we're going to get with this, because this sounds like a lot of work without any payback for somebody. But the point is, this would be your holy grail. You could look there and look at stuff, and suddenly you get ideas for things or organizations you never even knew existed. And maybe that would really turn you on. And I hope it does. Next slide. For instance, it would something have something like this. The Simpty Hollywood section has its second annual career day on April 27th unless you're in classes. And it's run at the Emmy, the Emmy people, Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. There's the address. You can go here, and they will give you more details. They weren't there last time I looked, because it's still in April. But that's eventually where you will see the details. Career day. Hello. If film or that kind of stuff or television is where you want to head, you might at least Take a look. Next slide. And then there's this. Simply just recently put together a panel of young professionals, future industry leaders. That is to say, you. You. But these are people like you who are just starting out in the industry and have already accomplished some pretty amazing things which you could do, and they were chosen. There were only seven of them, and they had this two-hour workshop at uh, HBA, the Hollywood Professional Association, which is part of SMPTE. SMPTE owns another organization. And if you want to know more about the panel of young professionals, like how you get considered or get on the list or something, 
here, Roberta Gorman, and here's her phone number or website. That's the SMPTE website. And I happen to mention, yeah, James Cameron and George Lucas are SMPTE members. Hint, hint, hint. You want to meet these people? I mean, I'll tell you, HPA was the greatest show I ever went to. That it just passed. You just missed it. February 11th through 15th. I, this is the first one I haven't gone to in 15 years. And when I first got there, I was looking at everybody walking down, and every, f every face was familiar. I know this guy. I know that woman. And it suddenly occurred to me, I've seen all these pictures in magazines. They write the articles. They're, they run stuff. They're the big ones, you know? They're the, they're the cool ones. And within two or three years, since I started to give presentations there, they started to call me Steve. <gasps> oh my God. God walks by and calls you by your first name. Now, what does that mean? You've made it, okay? I sold more wire and cable there than any other show I was ever at. I know it. So, are you a future panelist? Work on your skill set. Make yourself invaluable. Next slide. And here are just uh, some interesting places online about the future. Uh, this, one, it, this one is especially interesting. This is where I started, actually, which is this one down here. And it talks about <coughs> why certain car companies are not talking about electric cars, because if they even mention the words that their regular car sales would plummet. And they're not ready for that. So if they're doing anything, it is so secret that you know nothing about it. You follow this? Talk about a path less taken. This is where they're desperately trying to get to, and in secret at the same time. And then other things, uh, Kaspersky, you might know who they are, and 10 things that will change by 2050. And, uh, believe me, you go to YouTube, and you could be watching stuff like this for days and days and days and days. And all I would say is, look at these all, read these all, and then decide for yourselves which is the path less taken, and which are the things that are most likely to work in your own brain, and go for it. And that is the end of my presentation.